question I want to know is how do I beat the A students? Because in school, no matter what class I was in, I was always a C student, no matter what happened. I was, well, how come I'm always a C student? And I never really understood why. So though, that's why after I was about 27 years old, I started researching education, the system, and all this. And then I realized the whole system was set up for people like me to be in the middle, you know, because what they found out in 83 was that there were seven different intelligence, this guy Gardner. And I'm not strong in the top two intelligence, which is reading and math. I'm a horrible reader, I'm a horrible writer, and I'm very slow at math. But I'm very good with my hands, and I'm also pretty good with what they call intrapersonal communication. This interpersonal, which is communicating with another person. But intrapersonal is that communication with yourself. And if a person's very good with communication with self, you have a better chance of success. So the way I chunked it down, this has been 30 years, and again, I'm not a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon, is that the way you beat an A student was I finally figured it out, was that we had three parts to a brain. We had the, uh, the left brain, the right brain, and what I call the subconscious brain. Generally, when, when we say somebody's good at reading and writing and math, they're generally left brains. So these are the guys that do well in school. That is not me. I can read and I can write, but I read very slowly, and I can count as fast as my fingers can cheat on the single finger. And the right brain is the creative side. So this, so this is analytical, and this is creative. So the way I solve problems is very simple. The way I beat an A student is if I run into a problem and say, I don't have enough money, or how do I put this deal together, or how do I get to do this, it's not left brain, it's creative. I go spatial. So people who are artists and musicians and things like this, they're more right brain. They get hammered in school. You know what I'm saying? And then the subconscious mind, this is what they call the reactive mind also. There's a thing called reptilian brain in here. This is primal. This is fight or flight. It doesn't think. It reacts. So when I say to most people, quit your job, and they go, it, logically the left brain goes, oh yeah, I could make a lot of money as an entrepreneur. And the right brain goes, yeah, then I can have my new cookies go out in the market and I can be rich. And then the subconscious mind kicks in and goes, not you. <laughs> you know, the fear kicks in and all this. Now, the moment that fear kicks in, or greed, it doesn't make any difference, the brain drops, the blood drops out, goes here. The moment the blood drains out of here from the from this two things called the carotid arteries, it pulls down. It goes reptilian. You turn it into a little reptile and cannot think anymore. So that's for the last 30 years I've been watching that. So when I talk to certain people, no mention who, I talk to them, they go reptilian on me so fast, I can't believe it. <laughs> what if I fail? What if I make a mistake? You know, it's totally risky out there. Or that's fear, another one's greed. You know, the, when the real estate market was climbing, all of these guys who had no business in real estate jumped in. Ah! You know, and the market crashes. Ah! They all jump out. <laughs> so in other words, they go reptilian. Does that make sense? I call it the lizard. And when the sun's hot, they clown around. The sun's cold, they go inside. And they can't think because this is thinking. Does that make sense, you guys? So the other side of it is, with me personally, uh, there is the battle between the fat boy and the stud. I mean, every single morning, I wake up, and the stud says, OK, time to go to the gym. <laughs> the fat boy goes, nah, not this morning. I don't think so, you know. I think I'll have a little chocolate latte and relax a little. Or when they said, I'm going to be rich, and the subconscious goes, not you, you're a loser. You know, you know what I'm talking about here? It's the battle. It is the battle. Constant. And so the battle is between the left brain, the right brain, and subconscious. And for those who know me over the last 30 years, that's all I've been talking about. So I can educate this, but I found out this was the most powerful. It's called the reaction, is the reptilian. So when I say I'm going to go make money, no problem. All three brains line up. It's crystal. I don't have any fear there. 
But I learned, I also learned this in Vietnam. You know, they said, oh, there's a machine gun over there. They go, Roger Dodger, you know. He goes, left brain, right brain, I'll take that bastard off. There's only one of us is gonna go home today and it's gonna be me, I'm gonna kill him. You know? But you talk to other people, ah, what if I die? So you better not fly with me because I don't want you in my aircraft. If a person cannot control their subconscious mind, I don't want them on my team. Because they'll panic, they'll blow it, they won't shoot when they have to shoot, they'll run when they should be going forward, you know, they'll back up and things like this. So these are the whole thing. So in the battle of the human mind, it's all inside of here, as best I can see. So making money is not an issue. You know, going to the gym, big issue. Uh, eating is an issue for me. I'm not addicted to, I mean, I, I used to smoke for two years. When I said I'm not gonna smoke, stop. I drink a lot, I can stop. I like coffee, I can stop, and all this. But the one thing, as I go past a Chinese restaurant, cannot stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, here we go. You know? <laughs> you know, I'd be driving past the Imperial Peking Chinese buffet, and automatically the car would turn right, and I'd be in there. And my left brain would be going, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Do I make sense, you guys? Here? So the discussion today is, can somebody be addicted to being poor? And I think it's possible. And I don't know what it is. And can somebody be addicted to being poverty? Absolutely. You know, can somebody be addicted to being an employee even though they hate their job? I think possibly. Does that make sense, you guys, here? This is a different kind of addiction. So it's really about the battle between all of us and the way I decided I could win in the real world since I couldn't win here, I would never win in the classroom here. Never. There is not a class I would win in, because I don't read and I don't write. Terrible. I mean, I read very slowly. And I like to cheat. It's called I discuss. But you're not allowed to do that in school. But I'm very creative. I like to draw, paint. You know, I do play the ukulele you now. But this was my strongest one. It is my intrapersonal skill is the handling of fear and the handling of greed. That is what makes me an entrepreneur. I can handle that. You know, when, when, when things get frightening, I just turn it around, crank it up. Okay, when the economy's bad, I say, yes, baby, I'm gonna kick butt now. The reason I'm gonna kick butt is because these guys have lost their nerve. Does that make sense, sir? So right now, as the economy starts to go into a recession, people are starting to panic. This is the time to get rich. But when I talk to most people about a, a declining economy, you know, they're, ah, ah, and they can't think anymore. They go reptilian. Am I making sense here? So the way to win on the world is by, and this is the book coming out next spring in 2008, is you get your financial IQ up, you need three parts of your brain. <laughs> 